the hash code method tries its best to produce a unique number and it does 90% of time whenever we are inserting any objects where that object will be inserted that has been decided through a hash function okay and this hash function internally calls the hash code method to calculate the hash then the put method will be called after the hash is calculated okay now if i'll do a step over and here the index will be calculated now index is nine to the ninth bucket this object will go this key that we're inserting right now there will be a equals check how the equals check will be done through the equals method do we have a equals method overridden inside the voter class no if we don't have a equals method overridden here then which equals method will be called all right so welcome back to another video from my interview question and answer series today i was actually going through one of my java group that i have and someone posted a beautiful question there does set in java allow duplicates this is basically a question which has been asked to him in an interview and the interviewer over there just asked this question to almost every candidates that does set in java allow duplicates think as a programmer and give an answer to me and then everyone has been grilled for around 10 15 minutes on the same question and that's that's basically the only question which has been asked to every candidate just to test their foundation and fundamental obviously set doesn't allow duplicates right but does set in java designed to allow duplicates well that's that's a really nice question and obviously this question we can discuss for around hour but i'll try to make it really short as much as i can but yeah i want to touch kind of different things and why this question is so much important what are the different things that we as a developer need to hour about and the scenario best questions which can come over here so let's just explore a lot of different things we'll talk about set hash map the hash map and the set internal and the contract between two beautiful methods that we have in java called hash code and equals and the scenario best questions here so let's just start and let's just explore All right, so I have a project here called Q&A1 and I'll go to my source folder and source main. I'll go into my package called com.seleniumexpress and I'll go ahead and create a class here called app, all right? And inside my app class that I have, let me just zoom this out a little bit and let me have a main method and let's just discuss about a few things first. Uh, inside my main class, I have a hashet, so I'm gonna be saying hashet and I'll be taking a hash set of integer and I'm going to be saying like, um, you know, integer, integer set is equal to new hash set. All right, so I have created a set called integer set and let me go ahead and keep on adding few elements. So I'm going to be saying integer set dot add of 10 and let me copy this line and I'm going to be saying 20, 30 and 40. Now, if I'll be going ahead and printing this out, let's say I'm gonna be saying integer set. Now you tell me what are the elements which will be available in my set. And it's going to be pretty easy. Like 10 will be inserted to my set, 20 will be inserted, 30 will be inserted, 40 will be inserted, not a problem. So if I'll be going ahead and run this, perfect. So this is what I'm getting, 20, 40, 10, and 30. And these are, these are the elements that I have added and the set will basically um, will not follow any order. So based on the operating system that you are using, maybe you'll be finding these numbers are different, uh, different in order whenever you are printing the same to your console. But for me, you can see all the numbers that I have inserted uh, that has been inserted to my integer set, which is really good. Now, the next thing here is that if I'll be putting a sys out over here, if I'll be wrapping all this, all these elements inside the sys out, then like what this add method will return to me. Well, if you wanna see this code uh, right now, 
all this sysout statement will print whatever the add method will return. And the add method of the set will basically return a boolean. And this boolean basically says like if the element has added to the list. And you can see like if you're going to hover on this, it returns true if the set did not already contain the specif specified elements. Then that means if 10 we are inserting, then obviously the 10 is not present inside the integer set yet. So it will be inserted and it will be giving me true. And all these elements that we are inserting right now, it has not been exist inside the set. So all these elements will be inserted to here and it is just going to give me true for all this uh, number of insertion that I have. But let's say if I'm adding one more element here, right after I'm printing it, I'm adding one more element, let's say 40 again, and then I'm printing the set one more time right over here. Then what will happen? And obviously this 40 will not be added to the set because this 40 is basically uh, present in the, inside the set already and the integer set already containing the 40. So this, this will not be added to the set and this number already exists inside the set. So this is going to give me the false. And obviously the integer set will have the same number of elements, whatever has been inserted previously, which will be this. So this 40 will not be added to the set because this is a set and set doesn't allow duplicates, which is the, the foundation is correct. And you can see it's just get, getting me the same number of elements as before. And this new number has not been inserted to the set. So set doesn't allow duplicates. And um, the, the, if you see the definition of set, inside any any kind of website it does say you that the set designed like it will not allow you the duplicates that's fine that's fine now let me go ahead and create a custom class and this custom class is let's say this is person and inside this person class now i'll be having uh, let's say um let's say i'll be having a couple of things so private string person name Okay, in private, um, let's say int, every person will have a voter ID, right? Let's say voter ID, and this voter ID will be unique for that person. Let me keep the voter ID right over here, and the, then the person name. And I'll be doing one thing, I'll be creating control, a command n, I'll be creating a constructor to initialize this couple of variable, and also this will be fine, like let me just go with a constructor and this couple of variables right now. Now let me go back to the app.java class. Let me stretch out my app.java class a little bit. Let me just go to uh, go down and let me just give some white space over here so that I can start something really, really fresh here. And I'm going to be giving some sys out and some stars here just to separate things. Now here I'll be creating another hashtag and I'll be keeping a different person object inside this hashtag. So I'm going to be saying person has set is equal to new has set. And right over here, I'll be basically trying to add few person elements to this has set. So first I'll be keeping one person and let's say the person voter ID is 101. And this is unique for this person called a village. Okay. Now this is one guy that we have. Now let me copy this and let me keep adding a couple more person here. Okay, and let's say one or two, and let's say this is a V check, and let's say one or three, and let's say this is Ramesh, something like this. Okay, and I'll be adding sys out, uh, and I'll and I'll be printing the person has it over here. Now let me run this. Okay, so I'll be getting all the three person objects inserted to my asset. Just to see the person details, I'll go to the person and I'll do a command N and I'll be creating a two string method. Okay, and now let me go ahead to the app.java and again, let me run this particular main method and I'll be able to see all my person that I have added. Uh, 103 Rames. 101 of Vilash and 102 of Isaac. So all the person has been inserted to my asset. So what about if I'll be adding one more person to my asset right now? And this time I'm I'm just adding the same Avilash who has already been inside the asset. I'm adding the same Avilash right over here, same same person object which is equals with this. This person is same as this person, right? I'm adding this person again to this asset. 
Now, if I'll be running this, you're going to be seeing the shares should not allow duplicates. But what the heck is this? If you're going to see this Avilash has been added here, 101 in Avilash. And the same Avilash object is again here, 101 in Avilash. So 101 in Avilash, 101 in Avilash, two person object uh, has been inserted and this couple of person objects are identical and these are duplicates and set doesn't allow the duplicate objects, right? But now if you're going to see this couple of objects that I have created, these are the exact same object which not supposed to be inserted to the uh, to the set. But if you're going to be putting a S out here and uh, if you're going to be putting uh, wrapping it off with a sys out, this is going to get you through. And also if you're going to be putting the sys out over here, this is also going to get you through, right? because this is also getting inserted. So basically what I wanted is this should get you false as a return. But if you're going to be running this, you're going to be saying two, um, you know, you can see this line is also true. This line is also true. So this is out is also giving us true, but this should give us false. And here set is not designed automatically to protect you from the duplicate insertion. You got to do something. And what is that something? That something is really simple. You got to go to the person.java and you have to make sure like you have to override the hash code and equals. And if you override this, if I create the hash code and equals method right over here, and if I'll go to app.java and do run the same program again, and you're going to be seeing some different outputs. See, first time it is giving me two right here. So because this person, whenever it is inserted, it is it is not present inside the person set before, so it has been inserted. But this is out, or this is um, s out line is giving me false because this person, whenever we're trying to insert using the add method and we're inserting to the set, this already does exist over there. That's why it is giving me false. And my set is right now containing three person object, not four. One, two, of the last three. And this of the last object. You can see it only only happens to be here for one time. There is no duplicate has been inserted. So the magic has been done over here through the has code and equals. But why did I override this? What is the reason for this? And there can be so many questions right over here. And if you want to understand, okay, what the hack of, uh, happened over here, how this equals and has code method does the trick? What is the contract between them? How this how these things being internally called and for all these things we have to dig a little bit internal and that's what that we're going to be doing right now but if you're going to be comment out either of this method if you're going to be com commenting out this equals method if you're going to go to the app.java and run this things will not work you're going to be saying um you know all, see both the uh, right now both the times it is true and the obvious is over here for a couple of times right this is one of the last object and this is the duplicate, right? And if you want to go to the person.java, uncomment the equals, comment out the hash code. Again, you're going to be seeing like, um, you know, if you're going to be running this, you'll be seeing like both are true. So of the last is here for a couple of times. So the set is allowing duplicates. So the set is not designed automatically in Java to protect the duplicates. But in that case, whenever we are dealing with the integer class, the duplication does not allowed over here. Duplication is not allowed over here because integer is a system class and whenever or whoever has built this class in, um, in Oracle, they have already taken care how this integer class need to be built uh, and how it will be dealing with the time when it will be used as a key in the hash map or whenever we'll be using this integer in the hash set how it will be protecting the duplicate but we as a dev developer when we are creating classes like person in our project we have to take care of the same thing and the understanding a solid understanding about the hash code and equals and the contract between them is really important so let's talk about that and let's just explore this topic a little bit more i hope you are excited so let's just go to the second part of the video All right, so 
Before we talk about the has based collections like has set that we have created over here in this line or the hash map uh, and let me tell you like your has set behind the scene uses a hash map if you're going to see this has set whenever you are adding any elements if you're going to click on this you can see whatever the element that you are adding it is just putting it inside a map in the key and in the map the duplicate keys are not allowed right so you know you can see internally all your elements has been put inside a map using the put method and whatever elements you are adding like 10 20 30 that has been used as a key inside a map and obviously the map uses a key value pair so generally when you call a put method inside a map you're going to be doing like map dot put then you're going to be giving a key and a value pair but here whenever we are using any has set we're only providing one element which doesn't have any value to store we just have uh, these things and these things should be unique and that's why internally it is using a map and it's putting your elements as the key in the map because the map key will be unique and this present is basically a dummy object so if you're going to be clicking on present here control click you can see this present here is an object and you can see a dummy value to associate with an object in the backing map. So what I mean by that, that your hash shed, the way this add method internally works is, is basically uses a map. So uh, basically before we go into this hash based collections like hash set and hash map, we need to understand about a couple of important method and that's what my goal for today. Like to talk about different possible scenarios and the important methods like equals and has code. So before we talk about all this scenario, uh, scenario based things and before we go into this has based collections, let me go ahead and let me just stress out a little bit and I'm gonna be going ahead and just use a, a sout and I'll be you know separating by putting some dash here. And let me just start writing some code. So first of all, imagine I'll be creating a couple of objects. For now, I have created a class called person. I'm going to be saying person and I'll be creating a person object. Let's say Avilash. This is the reference and new person. And let's say I have uh, two things. 101 is the voter ID and the person name is, let's say, Avilash P. And this is one person. And let's say I have another person object. Let's say control C, uh, control V here. And let's say this is, let's say, uh, Ramesh okay and let's say the voter ID is one or two and he is like you know Ramesh uh, C okay and now let's say these are two different person object and obviously if you see in, in, in into our naked eyes this is like you know two different person uh, uh, they are like you know two different two separate individuals so if I'll be checking the person equality by I'll just say if Avilas dot equals if Avilas is equals to Ramesh I'll be writing here Ramesh and this R should be a small r uh, and I'll be saying if Avilas equals to Ramesh and if I'll be putting it inside a S out then obviously this should tell me no these objects are not equal because these are two different individuals that we have and if I run this, this is what you're going to be seeing this inside the console. Okay, it is giving me false. But let's say I will have another person object which is same as the first person. Let's say, uh, let's say this is a village and this is, I'll be creating another object called, let's say, a village duplicate. Okay, let me just remove this guy. Okay, now, now, now what should happen? Like this is, I'm going to be checking here. If a village equals a village duplicate, then what? What I believe here, uh, like if I look at the content, your yeah, the voter ID is same, the name is same, and obviously the voter ID is same and the name is same. And if the voter ID and the name is same, these are two identical objects that we have. And what I'm expecting that they should return me, uh, you know, true right now because this equality matches. But if I run this and look at this, what happened? Is it still giving me false? That means what? this avilash and this avilash duplicate doesn't doesn't match and these objects are not identical but i know that looking into the voter id of this person voter id of this person name of this person and name of this person these are identical so this object and this object are same but 
the equals method is just telling me no these are not same why is that because if you're gonna click on this if I click on this equals method control and click look at that where I'm moving I'm moving to the object class and look at that the object class equal method implementation whatever your whatever object you are passing to the equals method it just check the references with the this this means the current object right now what you are doing app.java if I'll go over here you're doing avilas avilas is the current object and on top of this object you are just doing uh, avilas duplicate you are checking that avilas duplicate equality using the equals method so avilas duplicate is going with the parameter and coming over here and you're just checking avilas duplicate equals equals this this means avilas and you are just doing you are just doing a equal equals thing over here you are just doing this internally this equals method is doing this so it's out of the last equals equals of the last duplicate. This is the implementation that object class has given over here. I'm just writing it separately just to, you know, show you like, you know, what it returns. And obviously, you know, this will be returning false. Why? Because this of the last is an object here. And whenever you create an object, that is an object will be created in HIF. Okay. Uh, and whenever you're creating another object, another time you are allocating memory in the heap and creating a, another object. So there are two different objects called Avilash and Avilash, Avilash Duplicate. And the object whenever we are creating in the heap, all these objects will, will, will be having a memory address, right? This object will be created somewhere. It should have an address, right? So these two objects are unique and will be having a couple of different address. And obviously, uh, whenever you are checking the uh, the equality using the double equals operator, it's basically checking whether these objects are pointing to one single object or this object are different. Obviously, these objects are different. And that's why uh, this is having a unique address. This is having a unique address. So obviously, this is giving me false. These objects are not equal. These are two different unique objects and that's why you are getting false here. So basically this is how the object class, um, the object class equals method works. It just check the references, whether the references are pointing to two different objects. And if yes, then these are two different objects. These are not same. But let's say if I'll be having, uh, let's say uh, another person here, person, let's say person and let's say uh, copy uh, a village and equal to I'll be pointing out to the same object here and right now if I'll be passing in this copy of the last over here and copy of the last over here then obviously this is going to get me true so if I run this so this is true right now because um, let's say I'm creating an object in the memory and that object name is Avilas, and then I'm creating a reference called copy of Vilas and assigning that reference to the same of Vilas object which has been created in the hip. And now it is pointing to the same object. So obviously this is going to get me true. So obviously uh, this reference and this reference both are pointing to this object only. And that's why, uh, you know, this equals is just giving me true. Okay. So I think this is pretty simple. I hope you understand how the object class equals method works. But now basically I will be, uh, reverting my code back the way it was previously and now what I'll be doing uh, so this is just giving me false because uh, you know the object class equals method is getting executed and the object class equals method is basically doing a uh, you know address comparison I think this is clear but what what magic has happened inside the integer class okay now let's just go ahead and create a couple of integer object and whenever I do this uh, what, what what basically I'm trying to do over here I'm creating two different objects and whenever I'm creating two different objects I1 and I2 obviously there will be create there will be a couple of integer objects inside the heap memory and if I'll be checking the equality here you know if I'll do s out and if I'll be doing i1 dot equals i2 then what will happen you know if we go with the foundation uh, in every classes uh, is a child class of the object class just like our person class is basically inheriting the property of the object class the object class has the equals method i have not written that equals method inside the person class but what i have done in the app.java i have done a village which is a person object and i'm just 
uh, calling the equals method even though the equals method is not there inside the person class still i'm able to call the equals method because the person internally extends to the object class and that's how i'm getting the equals method inherited from the object class like that the integer class also is a soft class of the object class object is the parent for every classes in java and whenever i am doing that i'll be calling the equals method and if i know the object class equals method will check the references and if the references are not pointing to the same object it will be giving me uh, you know uh, false and right now these are two objects and these two objects are containing same value that's fine these are identical objects but this this reference and this reference are different this is a object it will be uh, it will be having some memory address and this is an object and it will be having some memory address as well so uh, this uh, this address and this address is not same what basically the equals method checks and in this case it should give me false as well but this is giving me true why is that because if you're going to see the equals method if i'm going to click over here in the equals method unlike our in a person class this equals method is you see it took me to the integer class because the equals method is overridden inside the integer class and what this equals method does this basically dodge check the content you can see it is just checking the value and this value is basically basically the value that that we have inside the integer class this this is basically getting checked so if you're going to be saying the value is getting checked with um, the uh, the value whatever we are giving this object is being casted to an integer and they're just getting the value out of it and checking the value they are not checking the references uh, rather the value is being checked so this is the internal implementation of the integer method equals method so integer integer uh, class equals method does what is just check the comparison between the values that it is holding it is not just doing the object comparison like where this object has been created whether their memory addresses are different or they are pointing to the same object in the memory rather they are doing what they are extracting the value of i1 they are extracting the value of i2 then this equals method have some logic to compare the value of this and this whether the, these are equal and if this is equals this is giving me true if this is not equal let's say if it is 200 then this is going to get me false if i'm going to be running this this is going to get me obviously false so this is how uh, the equals method need to be done and in our case if you're going to see whenever we are comparing the person class equals method this is this is giving me this is giving me false and this is also giving me false because I told you the reason already here we are doing a reference check. So what about I know this Avilas and this Avilas duplicate. This couple of objects that, that they are having, they are basically having the same content. So I want to I want to compare the content, not their memory address. Then what I will be doing, I'll be going into the person class and right over here I'll be I'll be creating my equals method. I'll be just doing a command n create hash code and equals and um, I'll be doing next 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 and create and um, I will be comment I'll be commenting out the hash code method for now because I'm not talking about this and I have generated the equals method so if I'll be going to the after Java right now and now this equals method that I have generated here inside the person Java it will basically check whether the voter ID are matching and whether the person name is matching that is a simple logic if you want to know more about the equals method how to write a proper equals method i have videos on that i'll be linking it over here you can just go and research more about the equals method for for more than an hour and you'll be good at writing a equals method but in short this equals method just check the contents this we have override the equals method inside the person class so we'll be using it so let's just go to the after java class right now and if you see this equals method right now it will just check for the you know it will just check for the equality of the object and now this avilas object is containing um like you know the value 101 as a voter id and avilas p as the name and this object avilas duplicate is also having the same uh, same uh, contained over here and now this is going to get me the true because this equals method if i'm going to clicking over here it is going into my own equals method that i have written inside the person class unlike the last time it was going into the object class because i have overridden this so this equals method will be used 
So I'll go to the app.java if I'll do right click run this and now you'll be seeing um, You know, this is just giving me true. Okay, so now this is giving me true and obviously this will be this will be false because this object and This object are two different object in the memory because these are new keyword We have used to create the create the object and whenever you create new keyword Whenever you use new keyword two different objects will be created in the memory. Okay, uh, and whenever you will be comparing their address obviously there are there are two different objects which is having separate memory address and if you will be comparing whether these objects are different with respect to the address where, where they have been created, obviously they are different. So that's why it is giving me false that yes, these are not same, these are two different objects. But this equals method basically right now um, checking the content that we have already done inside our person class. Okay, I hope this is, this is clear right now. Now let's just jump to the hash code method and let's just understand what the hash code method does a little bit. All right, so now let's just talk about another important method that we have in Java is called hash code method. So what this hash code method basically does, let me tell you, and there are some thumb rules that we have to understand. Let me go all the way to down. Let me just have another sys out, and this time I'll be having a separator, and I'm gonna be saying hash code practice, all right? All right, so now, uh, there are a few things I'm sure like you know you should be already familiar with hash code but if not there are only a few things imagine if you have an object now let's say you have an object called um, something let's say um, you're creating a object called new string you are creating a string object let's say string object the first object is a village and let's say you are printing, you are, you are taking the hash code of it and you are printing it, okay? You are printing the hash code of this string of a last. And you are taking another string object, let's say you are creating a, another string, that means in the heap memory there will be two string object. And let's say another string object, let's say Abhishek, or I'll just take a different name, let's say um, Ramya, okay? And let's say I'll just create the hash code and I'll be just saying S out and I will be basically printing the hash code. So uh, do you think this hash code that I'm printing over here, the value of this hash code will be same or different? Now you got to only understand one thing. Here I'm creating a new string object. That means that is a string object called Avilas will be created in the heap memory. And whenever there will be an object will be created. Uh, that object will be allocating some memory space. So that's a different object. And whenever I'm creating a Ramya object, there will be again another object will be created in the memory. And that mem that object also will have some, uh, you know, memory space. This object will be created and there will be some memory will be allocated. And wherever that object will stay, that will be having an address, right? So these are two different uh, objects that we have. So how to uh, how to basically uniquely identify those objects um, like obviously the memory address is one thing that we can uniquely identify those objects because obviously for each object it will be having a unique address in the memory where it stays okay so you know, maybe right now if you're going to be running this hash code method you're going to be finding like this couple of objects are having uh, two different, uh, you know, hash code value over here. And this hash code values are uniquely identifying these objects. There is a catch on this sentence. I'm going into this, but for now we can think for this object, it has a unique hash code. And for this object, it has a unique hash code. So every object you will be creating, let's say I have somewhere a person object, maybe here, if I'll be taking this person object, and if I'll be doing S out 
and I'll be pasting this person object and I'll, I'll be calculating the hash code. This person object will be having a specific hash code. You can see this is where this object has been. Um, this 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 uh, object is having a specific hash code is this, which is uniquely identifying this object. Well, this sentences that I'm saying right now, I'm feeling bad whenever I'm saying this sentences because there is some catch in that. So let me show you with some example right now and let me tell you a few things which are really important. Let's say whenever you are creating an object, right? This object, imagine this entire black space is a heap area. Let's say you are creating two objects, right? And whenever this object will be created, there will be some memory address. Let's say this is having a memory address of this. I'm some taking some random value, right? And this is having a memory address of this. So in Java, how the hash code is being calculated whenever you are basically calling this hash code method, what is happening? Uh, this hash code method is basically getting generated out of this memory address, right? Every, every object that we have in Java, they have a unique address, right? And the hash code method, the job of this is basically to create some unique number for every unique object. That's the goal of the hash code. Like whenever you are designing a hash code method, what it should do, like for every object, like for this object you are creating, uh, you are calculating the hash code by calling this method. For this object, you are calculating the hash code by calling this method. You have many objects, right? And for all this object, if you're calculating the hash code, calculating the hash code. The goal of this hash code method is to create a unique number. Let's say for this, it will create a number called 2231. For this, it will create the number called 3122. For this, it will create something 1111. Code. For every object, the hash code need to be unique. And this is what this method tries to do every time. Okay, and how it tries to do in Java? This hash code basically in Java gets generated with this memory address. So it takes the memory address. You can think like every object will have a specific memory address and it takes the memory address and with this memory address it does some mathematical operation and will get you a specific number. And that's how it ensure that most of the time it will get you a unique number. Okay, so as of now, what we got to understand, like this hash code method need to provide us a unique number for every objects that we have in Java. But sometime it doesn't happen that you have to take care of. The hash code method tries its best to produce a unique number and it does 90% of time, but 10% of time it fails. So in Java, it is absolutely possible Let's say if you have two, two objects like this, let's say you have two objects. This is one object. This is one object. It is absolutely possible. These two object will have the same hash code. Okay. These two objects will have the same hash code. So it is not guaranteed that if you want, so this is, this is the hash code value. This is, this is not the address. The address will be always will be unique. This is address, right? All these things that I have written here is address. But now I'm talking about hash code. Okay. The hash code is being produced in Java by using the memory address internally. And that's how this hash code will get you a unique number. Every time you are creating a object and if you're running hash code, then you'll feel like, okay, I'm going to be getting a unique number for every object. That's true, but not all the time that you have to keep in mind. So it is absolutely possible. Like if you have a couple of different object, one object here, one object here, maybe whenever you are running the hash code method on top of this object, it might give you this value. And this is a absolutely different object, which will have a specific memory address. This will, ha this will have a different memory address, but it is absolutely possible. Like we'll be getting a, getting a same hash code number. So never ever do this mistake. If somebody will tell you, okay, I have two hash code. One is one, one, two, two. One is one, one, two, two. Can you just tell me if, if you see these two hash code, this hash code is basically the same object. Like this hash code is basically defined the exact same object. No, it may be, it may not be. 
right? So when you see the hash code, you can never be sure that it is basically pointing to the same object or it is basically the same object. Okay, it, it, it may be a different object. It may be this hash code goes to maybe a different object, but the hash code value will be same even for two different, different objects. This can happen. Okay. So what we got to understand from here is that in Java, two objects, two different objects can have the same hash code as well. I'll prove it to you first, right? So if I'll, if I'll go to here, and here you are seeing like every time I'm running the hash code method on top of any object, like here I have taken a villa string object, here I've taken Romeo string object, here I've taken a custom object called person. And every time I'm getting a unique hash code for all these objects that I have created. And that happens as I said, um, like the hash code job is to create a unique number for every objects that we have in Java. But does it, does it happen all the time? Let's see that. Let's create a couple of string. I'll go with one of my favorite example. I'll just write S out. I'll be creating a string called new string of, let's say, um, I know the string. So I'm going to be using the string FB and I'm going to be doing dot hash code. And I'll be creating another string called new string of, let's say, I'll be creating a string called EA and I'll be calculating the hash code over here. And obviously right now, this is a string object. You know, it goes to one of the uh, place in the heap, a memory address will be allocated. So this is a separate object because I'm using the new keyword. And this is also a separate object. It is also having a, another object in the heap. It will have a separate, uh, you know, address allocated to that. So obviously the hash code method need to give us the unique number to identify all these objects. So for like the hash code will try to give a unique number for this object. This hash code will give us the unique number for this object. Is it going to happen? If I'll run this, you see, I'm getting the same number for FB and for EA. Okay. So this can happen. So two different object can have the exact same hash code. So never see the hash code. And whenever you see the hash code, like two, two, three, six, two, two, three, six, don't think blindly like, okay, I'm getting the same hash code means this is one object only. Okay. This is the same object. I'm, I'm, I'm calculating the hash code. It can happen that two different, two different objects can have the exact same hash code. It can happen anytime. Just do remember that. But I'm going to be showing you one more scenario. Let's say if you, if you have an object here, okay, let's say this is a string object. The string object is a B. Okay. Another string object that you have over here, it is also called a B. Now, whenever you have two string object having the exact same content, right? Now this object is also a B. This object is also a B, right? Whenever you have two different object. Okay. Now these are two different object. This is like, this is one object having a memory address of let's say X, Y, Z. This is one object having a memory address of Y, Y, Y. I'll not do that because this is nonsense. I'll be writing number one, one, two, two. Let's say this is another memory address three, three, four, nine. Okay. This is not hash code. These are memory address, right? Now let's say these are two different string object called OV and OV. And you know, like these two objects, when you see, is this objects are equal? Like object wise, yeah, this is a different object. This is a different object. But if we, if we see like the content wise, these objects are equal, right? Because these are having the same content. So we can consider it like this is a duplicate object to this, right? So when like, like if you think like the equality in terms of the content that we are having, these objects are having the same content. Okay. And when the contents are matching, if, if you are just trying to say like this two objects are equal based on the contents, like if you are checking the equality like that, you have to make sure if the two objects are equal, then they always have to produce the same hash code. Okay. Like this, if this OV is producing the hash code called three, 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 this object which contains OV also should produce a hash code called three, 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 three. That's the thumb rule. The thumb rule is if you see any time two equals object, if this equals object name is X and this object name is X, even though they are two different objects, if their contents are equal, 
it all always have to produce the same hash code is always have to produce the same hash code and don't compare the hash code with the memory address the memory address can be 2122 two, two, and this are this address has been created in the memory let's say 3155 five. okay but look at the hash code the hash code are same because the content of the objects are equal so two equal object if any objects which are equal any objects which are equal those objects should produce the exact same hash code okay i'll tell you uh, how it should work now let's just go and just taste something let's just go here and then let's just do s out and i'll be taking a object called new string and i'll be taking like something let's say a b and i'll be just doing a hash code okay now let me just run the same line again and here i'm creating another string i'm using a new keyword so that means two equal object right now i'm having but i'm creating two different objects with this content of e this is one content creating with the new keyword and all these things will have unique hash code even though these objects are different even though these objects are these objects are different in memory but still the hash code will be same now if i'll be doing run this okay look at this this hash code and this hash code this hash code are same okay but the objects are different but the hash code are same you can check hash code for any equal object okay and let's say you're going to be checking the hash code you're going to be saying sys out okay now if you're going to be running this right click run this you're going to be checking like the hash code of the num1 and num2 are 100 and 100 right the hash code of this couple of integer are same um, like both the integer hash code are same right if you're going to be checking with like two objects which are equal their hash code should be same now let's just go to our custom object that we have created uh, we have created um, a custom object uh, right over here somewhere uh, this one the person object the person class that we have now let's copy this let me go down and let me create couple of person let's the first person is let's say abdul person name is let's say abdul let's say abdul s and let me just create another person let's say let me the person name is Amir and the person name is here Amir okay these are two different object right Abdul and Amir if I'll check the hash code control C this let's say hash code of Abdul Amir are let me these are two different object so obviously the hash code of this couple of objects should be different let's see if it is happening right click run as java application and if you're going to be seeing over here these two objects are different and obviously that should happen because these are two different object like as i said for 90 percent of time or 95 percent of time the the goal of the hash code method that we are running over here it will return us a unique hash code and if i click on this hash code right now that i'm running on top of this abdul method if i go if i go into this you can see this hash code method is just inheriting from the object class because we don't have a hash code method written yet inside our person class and the way this hash code method works is like it's a native method you can see it's a native method because the hash code implementation code the java people has not given this this is a hash code this hash code method internally uses the native language maybe some c language code to calculate the hash code and basically the way this hash code method works is basically creates the hash code uh, by using the internal memory address of the object and if you can see over here the hash code method returns a hash code value for this object as far as reasonably practical as far as reasonably practical the hash code method defined by a class object returns a distinct integer for a distinct object like it tries to return a distinct integer for a distinct object as much as reasonably practical and obviously right now this couple of persons that we have over here these are two different objects obviously they are they are occupying two different memory addresses and the hash code is being calculated from there and obviously this hash code is giving me two different value for because these these are two different objects so it's giving distinct value or a unique value for each object which is which is correct 
This is how the object class hash code method works. So it basically generates the hash code based on uh, where this object are getting stored in the memory. Okay, but what about if I if I remove Amir from here, if I'll copy this Abdul and paste it over here again, and I'll be saying like Abdul duplicate. Okay, and I'm gonna be copying this and pasting it over here. So I'm gonna be saying Abdul has code and Abdul duplicate has code. Now, what should happen? Now you can see these are these are two different object obviously because I'm using the new keyword. So two different object will be created in the memory. But look at their content. Don't you think this person voter ID, which is 101 and name is Abdul and this person object uh, voter ID is also 101 name is also Abdul. So these are obviously the same object. But if you see the hash code right now, if you see the hash code right now, right click run as Java application, run the main uh, method over here. Now you see it is giving me still two different object. And obviously that's correct because these are two different objects. That means that they have been staying in two different place in the heap memory. And whenever I'm calling this hash code method, right now this hash code method is basically calling the object class hash code method. You can see, and the way the object class hash code method works, you know, like it calculates the hash code based on the memory address and try to give us a distinct hash code for a distinct object. And these are two different objects is giving me two different hash code but that should not happen. We have two person like this. This is this person and this person. This person voter ID is also one, 101. This person voter ID is also 101. This person name is also Abdul. This person name is also Abdul, right? So obviously this person and this person are equal, right? These are not two different person. I can say these are equal. Technically, uh, like, this is a separate object. This is a separate object, but this is a clone of this, right? And you can see this is a duplicate object like this object uh, details are same as this object details. So, uh, so like this, this content of this objects are equal. The characteristics object characteristics of these two objects are equal. So technically the term that I have given you, this object should give me the equal hash code. Like, if this is giving me 1122, this hash code also should be 1122. This is the thumb rule of Java. If two objects are equal, then their hash code should be same. But right now, if you're going to be seeing over here, if I'll be going out of this, now these two objects hash code are coming different. Now, whenever I'm running my program, it is just giving me a different hash code. So what's, what I should do, I should go to the person at Java. I will be generating my hash code, hash code method right here. Now, if I'll be overriding my hash code method, now I'm planning to create the hash code method the way the internally uh, the, the implementation has given. Again, I will not be telling you how to write hash code method. You can just go to my hash code video and can watch like how to create the hash code. But in short, what I'm planning to give this method also, I have not generated. I have made my uh, IDE to generate this. I just hit a command in and equals in hash code I have generated. And the way this hash code method has been created is calling some hash method of objects class. This is a utility class giving the voter ID and the person name, which are my, which are my property of this class. And based on the property, which has been fit to this value, based on that is creating the hash code and making sure if the properties are same, then I will be giving you the same hash code. Now, if right now, as I have removed the command out of it, if I go to after Java, if you're going to click the hash code, I'm coming to my class hash code method, my person class hash code method. I'm not going into the, you know, object class hash code method. So now if I'll be going to after Java, if I'll do right click and run this, now you'll be seeing the same hash code the same hash code for this couple of person. Okay. The one thing you have to make sure for this person, this person objects, the hash code should be same. If you, if you'll be keep creating the duplicates like this. Okay. And let's say duplicate one, duplicate two. Uh, these are all new objects, but these all objects are duplicate to this. So if you're going to be keep printing like uh, the duplicate, uh, if I'll be keep printing this object, Abdul duplicate to the hash code. If I'll be keep printing the duplicates uh, hash code also, if I'll be running this, every time I'll be printing the hash code of all the duplicates object, 
I will be making sure it is just getting me the exact same hash code value. That's the thumb rule. So there are two rules I have told you about the hash code. Hash code must be unique as much as reasonably practical. Whenever you are creating a hash code method, this, has, this, this one we have developed inside the person class. So whenever we are creating a hash code method, we have to make sure like if we are checking two different objects, then their hash code must be different. Um, we will try to give as much as practical. We need to give the distinct hash code for distinct objects, but it is possible that two objects can have the same hash code. Second thing, uh, if two objects are equal, if you are checking the equality of two objects by comparing the content. So make sure whenever two objects are equal by any term, like whatever way you are comparing two objects are equal by checking the references or checking the contents. If two objects are equal, then they should share the same hash code. Okay, this is very important. So things are clear. Two objects are equal. That means hash code need to be same. If hash code are same, that doesn't mean that two, two objects are equal. Clear? Let's go to the next point. Alright, so let's just go ahead and let's just start exploring right now a little bit about how the hash map basically internally works. Because if we understand this, a lot of things will be get clearer, like what is the role of hash code and what is the role of equals method whenever we're working with any hash based collection. But before we move into that, I want to tell you about a few things. I want to tell you about a tragedy which happened with me just a few minutes back. Then I went for a break and coming back right now. Uh, my, uh, I just almost recorded everything, then my IntelliJ crashed. And in the same time, my video recorded also, video recorder also stopped. So there was some fancy problem which happened. But that's fine. Like I have imported your same project to like to my Eclipse. And here I'll be coding from now on. So you have the same person class. That's something that you have written in your IntelliJ. And you also have your same code in your app too. Okay. Oh, sorry. In your, in your app.java. Like this is the code that, that we have done uh, so far in this um, conversation. But I'll not be touching that. I have created a new app, uh, like, you know, a class called app2. And right here, I just created a hash map and inserted some of the values here and printing out the map. And the reason why I'm using a hash map because you know your hash set or any hash based collection um, are backed by the map behind the scene. It is using a map. So having an understanding how the hash map works internally uh, can, can get us the answer for the question that we are actually looking for, which is, are we able to uh, are we able to insert duplicate elements into a hash set or a hash map? If yes, then what is the reason? And if no, then how can we avoid with a proper explanation where we will have a solid understanding about the hash code and the equals method and the contract that they have between them? So we'll be talking about different uh, probable scenarios right over here. So so far we have a map here. We have inserted, um, you know, let me just change it to, uh, let's say string uh, as a key and integer as a, a value. Let me just insert a key value pair. So my key will be a string. So let's say I'll be having a village, a Vishak and Asis and over here. And let me have some age over here. Let's say Vilas age is 40. We have uh, three different entries to our map and these are the key value pair and this is like uh, the name of the person and this is the age. Okay, and I'm printing the hash map here. Okay, let me run this. I hope it will run fine. There, there will be three entries to the map, which is good. 
Now, let's say I will just have one question before I proceed. Let's say if I'll be copying this and pasting it here again one more time, and I'm going to be saying the age of a village is 30, then how many elements that you will be seeing in my map? This Avilas is right now a duplicate element as you have seen like Avilas has already been entered here and if you see my console uh, Avilas is 40 years old right now I am basically trying to override the age that means this this uh, value that we have it will be override this older value that we have for the key of Vilas because the key will be always unique. So uh, if you're going to be running this program, this value of the key of Vilas will be overridden. So now if I'll be running this, uh, this will be taking the priority and you can see like, you know, 30 is something is the age of the Vilas right now, which basically overrides the older value of the key of Vilas, right? Now we have to understand how this entries that we have, how it works. Okay. A couple of things I want to discuss uh, right now. Let me, um, let me just do one thing. Let me just remove the sys out over here. Let me stretch out this thing a little bit like this. And let me start drawing something over here. All right. So now tell me guys, whenever we are creating a map like this, uh, let's let's understand what ha what happens behind the scene. Okay, I think a lot of you understand how the HasMap works internally. If not, it's a good time to learn about the HasMap internal implementation, and that's something you can learn. I have a whole different playlist for that. You can start learning uh, with the debugging, and you will actually understand how it works behind the scene. But right here, let me just summarize it a little quicker. Uh, and this will this will really help us to understand the equals and hash code method uh, and when they are getting used here. So whenever you are creating a map and whenever you are inserting some values here, how it goes behind the scene is whenever you are creating a map, first of all, you know there will be a array of buckets which will be created internally. So these are some list of buckets that we're going to be having. These are like a array. And these are like the array indexes, right? So these are the array indexes. So how many indexes will be there? That will be initially whenever you are creating a hash map, there will be 16 number of indexes. So it will go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like uh, it will go till 16. I'll just put dot, 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 and 16, uh, sorry, 15, because we started the indexes from 0. So 0 to 15 is 16. So like the hash map behind the scene is creating this array and which have around 15 indexes and all this, um, you know, all these things are called as one, one bucket. So there are 50, uh, there are 16 numbers, uh, numbers of buckets here where all these entries will go and will be stored. Now let's take the first entry here. It is of the last and 40. So now for this object, there is an object here. You can imagine like, this object um, key is what? Avilash. And value is what? 40. So how this, um, you know, object will be inserted here and to which pocket this object will go. And for that, first of all, we take the key, okay? And we put it inside a function. The function is called a hash function. The hash function job is, it is going to take the key and will get you a hash code. So now, the hash function is basically, uh, you know, will be taking the key right now, okay, and will be generating a hash code for Avilas. Let's say the hash code will come like this, okay. Now that that actually means that this object right now will go to this this bucket, this number bucket. But do I have a bucket number like this one one two one 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 in my list of buckets that I have or the array of buckets? Uh, the, the array that I have, do I have an index called 112111? No, I don't have it. So uh, obviously it's not a that big array, it's just a smaller array which is having only 16 number of buckets. So so what we'll be doing right now, this hash code will be further be processed with a mathematical operation or a bitwise operation. It will It will be processed and we'll be finding a smaller number. Okay, so now this is what we call a bitwise 
bitwise operation. I'll be showing you what kind of operation is going behind. So now this H, H means hash code, right? So this H has been calculated through this hash function or where it, where it took the key, okay? And now the I will be calculated. I means index. The I will be calculated out of a bitwise operation that will be performing on the top of this hash code. And it'll give us a smaller number like one. And that basically means that I is one means now this object will be going to the first bucket. Now this object will be coming here. Okay, let's say this is a VLAS. Even I cannot read it what I have written there, but think like this a VLAS and the value is 40. Okay, so this is my first entry. Next one is Obisec again, another object. This is Abhishek that I need to enter and the age is 30. Now this object key has been taken, will be inserted inside the hash function. The hash function will get me a hash code, let's say 333112. And out of this hash code, the uh, this is the H, the I will be generated. Now let's say the I has been processed through a bitwise opera operation and the, the bitwise operator has given me this I, let's say three. Now this object will be inserted to number three. Okay, so Abhishek goes here with the value 30. That's how the insertion happens. The I and H has been calculated. H has been cal calculated through the hash code uh, or the hash function. The hash code has been calculated through this. And the I is basically the index number where my values are going or where my objects are going. And that has been calculated through a bitwise operator. Okay, this must clear, right? Okay, now let's just talk about a hash collision scenario. For an example, you are inserting another object called ASIS, right? So let's say another object is here. This object is ASIS, the third one, and the value is 25. So I'm taking 25 here. Now this object need to be inserted to one of the bucket, like which bucket it will go. First, it will be uh, processed through the hash function. The key will be taken and it will go into the hash function. Now the hash function will get me the hash code. Imagine the hash code will be coming like this, 112 and 111. Now this is the hash code that we get. Now tell me guys, do you see the hash code of ASIS and the hash code of Avilas, these two are same, right? It's also 112, it's also 111. And now if it'll, it will be further be processed and the index number will be calculated. The index number is again coming one. So that means now this, this object will go to the index number one. But look at here, we already have an object here which is already placed in the index number one. So now we'll be inserting this object to this this bucket index one bucket now I cannot directly insert this object to here so before I insert this assist object to the bucket number one this object to here first there will be a comparison will be needed the first comparison will be like okay now this has the same hash code the hash code of this is let's say one one two one, one, one. Now, this object again will be inserted with the same hash code. So there is a collision. There is a collide between the hash code. There is already an object exist with the same hash code. So if the object exists with the same hash code, can we think like the keys are also equal? No, keys are not equal. I told you two different objects can have the same hash code. It is absolutely possible. Now, that's why you can see a Vilas object is a separate string object. ASIS is a separate string object, but still they're having the same hash code, okay? So now this object will be inserted here, but before they insert it, there will be an equals check. Okay, the hash code are same, but what about uh, the equality, okay? Now the content will be compared, like the Obilas object and the hash ASIS object. These strings are equal or not equal? Obviously they're not equal. Now, whenever the equals check will happen, before the insertion of the object here to this bucket, like whether the keys are equal, the, uh, using the equals method, 
the equals method will say no these are not the same object the keys are different and in this case there will be another node will be created because basically the way it is going to store the objects using the linked list this is it will be internally using a linked list here so there will be the next node which will be basically storing this object right now as is and the age is 25 and this is also having the same hash code 112111 so you can see this object hash code and this object hash code are same but these are two different objects and they are going into the same bucket but right now you know before we enter the same object over here we made a check okay like whether this object that we're inserting is equal or not equal but right now let's see this scenario let's see let's see this scenario of the last n30 okay let's say there is an object here and this object is of the last the key is this n30 is the edge right now it will go through the hash function and the key hash will be calculated let's say the key hash is coming as one one two one 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 now see why this object hash code is coming as one one two and one 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 because i told you right here also we have calculated the hash code of avilas this this came as one one two one 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 again this is the same avilas this is the content of this object or the content of this key key is avilas this is a string object uh, this string name is Avilas, this string name is Avilas. So for a same string, if you are calculating the hash code, a string with the same content, if you are calculating the hash code for thousands time also, the hash code will be same. So now as it is a different object, now you can see uh, we have key as Avilas 30. This is a separate entry that we are inserting to our map. But as this is the same string, so we are getting again 112111 as our hash code. Now then the index will be calculated for this hash code. Again it is coming 1. But before we make an entry to this 1th bucket or the first bucket, we already have a couple of elements present there, which is of last and assets already. So first time or uh, before it makes an entry to the bucket, it is going to check, okay, there is a hash collision. There are already some objects present with the hash code so i'm not the first one which is going to the bucket but let's check if i do exist previously if the same ob says the object with a similar key already exist and now when the object will be inserted here the equals method comes into the picture okay now the equals method will be called it will just do the check the key one which is abilas abilas right dot equals key two the key two which we are inserting is avilas again the same avilas right the equals method we are calling which equals method the strings equals method the string equals method does what is checks the content or this checks the references obviously it checks the content because the equals method inside the string has been overridden okay and the equals method of the string class does what is checks the content so avilas dot equals avilas is going to give you true or false it's giving you true because the contents are equal avilas is a separate object again you are creating avilas is a separate object if you are doing a reference check using the using the object class equals it is going to give you false because these are two different objects in the memory but the equals method inside the string class does the content check or the content comparison and this equals method right now whenever i'm calling on top of this object of alas this will be basically giving me what is giving me true because this content is equals to this content so this equals method will be called on top of this string object and the string equals method gives me true now if it is true this object is saying okay then if the key this key and this key are same this is a possible duplicate so this object will not be inserted rather like you know what uh, this value will be updated to 30 now now the value has been updated of the first object is 30.
this is how the objects is being inserted so two things which are really important here whenever we are inserting any objects where that object will be inserted that has been decided through a hash function okay and this hash function internally calls the hash code method to calculate the hash okay so that's how the hash being generated and then whenever we're inserting any other elements to a bucket as there is a already an object exist here if we are inserting a duplicate object with the same key to check that uh, what it is doing it is using the equals method to check the contents of the key if the contents of the key are not equal then it is allowing us to insert the object if the contents of the key are, are are equal then the value of this will be override because this is a possible duplicate and that's how we'll be using the equals method to do this okay to achieve this thing all right so this is how the has 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 code method and equals method is coming into the picture now before i move ahead with the has code and equals a little bit more and we'll be giving you different scenarios let's just understand uh, let's just uh, you know do a small debug for five minutes just to understand this i h and the number of buckets that we have is called n and in this case the n is 16 because there are 16 number of buckets here okay so now let's just uh, see like you know how this happens internally with a little bit of debugging so let's just go for that Alright, so now let's just do a small debugging here just to understand you know the things that we have discussed is working as per our discussion or not let me put a breakpoint here whenever I'm inserting this object of a lash as a key and this as a value this is an entry whenever we are inserting this entry to this hash map okay so I, I already put a debug point here so I'll start debugging so debug edge uh, Java application let me let my program flow stops at line number 11 and now uh, yeah so now my program stops here so I will be going to the next step maybe I'll I'll be skipping to the debug perceptive so can I see the debug here debug yes so yeah so now we can see internally I have a hash map created, but it's not initialized yet. So because we have not inserted any uh, anything to the map, so it's not inserted yet. So we'll be inserting our first entry, then the map will be initialized. Or you know, the, if uh, like it will not show you anything, you can click on this button. Now it will be showing you everything. The table is null. It will show you all the internal property. You can show the logical structure. And the table is null because the table has not been created yet because there is no elements are inserted to the map. Now, whenever we'll be inserting this element, what will happen? The put method will be called. We'll be going into the put method. Now you can see the put method is inside this hash map class. So I'll be putting a breakpoint here because I know the put method will be called whenever I'll be inserting an element and the put method internally calling a put val method and the key and value that we are passing it is also passing it over here and it is also passing the hash of the key as I have told you the key that you'll be giving it will be finding the hash of that key by using this hash function and this will only decide which index this object will be going into so if I'll be doing a control click on this hash function I already have a hash function here so I'll be also putting a breakpoint here in the line number 339 can I put one okay I'm able to put it one so this hash function will give me an integer this is basically a hash code and you can see the hash method is internally calling the key dot hash code method so whatever the key that um, you know you are providing it is finding the hash code of that and this hash code method is basically your object class hash code method so if a hash code is not been overridden in your class then this object class hash code method will be called and the object class hash code method will create the hash code based on your memory reference we already discussed about it 
So let's go back. So bottom line is let's not see all the code. The bottom line is we are going to get the hash code uh, based on the hash code method which has been written inside the class. So if the hash code method has not been written inside the class that we are providing the key object, then the object class hash code method will be called. Okay. Now let's go back to the put val method. I'll be clicking command O and put val. Uh, after that, I'll be going into the put val method. And here, you know, there are a lot of logic. I don't want to talk about that. But one breakpoint I want to give at line number 627. Just want to see like if my, can I just toggle a breakpoint here? Okay, let me put one in the if clause. And I'll, let's not see the code and let's not go mad because I don't want to, you know, go into the logic. But one thing that I want to drag your attention to here, there is a equals check somewhere. So I'll be putting a breakpoint here in the equals, in the equals check right here. Okay, so that's it. So the put val method is basically having the logic to insert your object to one of the index. And you can see there is some index calculation going over here. I stands for index. And this just goes with some n minus one, then and operation. This is the bitwise operation that I was talking about. Uh, it will be getting the hash. The hash is being calculated and being passed to this put val method. Uh, that hash function is being called. We're getting the hash code value, then we are passing it to the put val function. And with this hash, uh, they are doing some bitwise operation and uh, they are getting us the i where basically this object will go and will be stored. So let's just see if that thing is happening. Now my breakpoint is here. Let me insert this overlast object. So uh, let me just do a resume. See, the put method got called. Now it is going to internally call the put val method, but before that, it will calculate the hash of the key and then it will be passing it to the put, put val method. And put val method is the actual method which is holding the logic for the hash map uh, object insertion, not the put method. Put method doesn't have the logic. It's just calling the put val method internally, okay? Which, which actually does have the logic of the insertion. Now, let me just do a resume. Now it will go to the hash method, uh, sorry, the hash function, which is gonna calculate the key hash. So let me just do a resume. We already have a breakpoint. Now this is going to call the hash code method of the object class. Uh, okay, in this case, the hash code method of the object class will be called or hash code method of the string class will be called. Now, what is my key? My key is a village. A village is a string. And now the hash code method of which class will be called. If I'll be going into control shift T object class. And if I'll be looking for the hash code method and if I'll be putting a breakpoint here inside the object class hash code method, will it be get called? No. Why? because that key is a string class object. The key that we are getting is a string. Now the string, uh, now whenever we do string dot hash code, the string already have a hash code method overridden. So if I'll be going into the string class, control shift T and string class, Java dot lang. And if I'll be looking for a hash code method, that there is a hash code method already been overridden, which basically does a content check. Okay, so basically this one will do the content check. I can also put a breakpoint here just to make sure like the string class hash code method is getting called. Now I will be going into the hash, uh, sorry, the hash map class one more time. This will get me the hash code by calling the string class hash code method, which is the overridden hash code method inside the string class, which is do the, uh, which, which will get you the, you know, hash code based on the content, not uh, based on the memory references, okay? Where that Avila's object exists, not based on the memory reference of that, it will not generate the hash code, rather based on the content of Avila's, it will generate the hash code, okay? Now, if I'll do a uh, resume, I already have a breakpoint inside the hash code method of the string class. So you can see the string class hash code method got called, and now it is going to generate the hash code and will return the H. So, yeah, so, um, I don't want to go into that. So it will return me the hash code. So that's fine. So you can do step over step over and you can see like uh, the hash code which is going to be returned to me is this. So this is something that I'll be getting and now I can just do a step over. Okay. Now this, if I'll do a step over again, now my hash of the key has been calculated and now the hash code is generated and now we'll be passing the key 
we will be passing the value which is 40 is the object uh, the the age um, age object the integer object that we are having because my map is having a key of a village the value of 40 that will be going into this football method so if i'll be doing a resume now i am inside the football method i want to show you a few things right here so now um, you can see uh, the table now the table is null and now the table will be uh, assigned where basically my object will be going this is a this is a table this is like an array of indexes 16 buckets you remember that if i step over uh, now the table has been initialized to null i think when i will be inserting the first element this will be initialized to 16. so if i do a step over uh yeah so now you can see the table has been created and there are 16 indexes here 0 to 15 is 16 uh, there are 16 number of indexes are here. The table has been resized and n means the table and n length is 16. That means the length of the table and you can see there is something that if you're going to see here, the n is showing you as 16 here. Okay, so this is my table length 0 to 15. Okay, and n is the number of buckets that we have. Now where this uh, object will go? We already have calculated the hash for the key, which is this. Now here the I will be decided through this uh, operation, the bitwise operation over here. It will be uh, giving me a value. Now if I'll be going and doing a step over, you'll be finding the I values. Look, the I value is 13. That means this object that I was inserting, that will be going to the 13th bucket of the table. Okay, so now, now you'll be seeing inside the table, uh, inside the 13th bucket, this will be going over here. Now we can see a new node will be created and this node will contain a hash of the key, the key, the value and the pointer to the next node. Uh, this is how it is going to be a linked list which will be going into that bucket. So uh, let's not worry about that. Treat new node as an object. It, the, there will be an entry for that object will be created that we want to insert right now in the tab of i. The tab is our table. Inside the 13th pocket, there will be a new node will be created with the key and value and the has and everything. If I do a step over, now the value will be going to the 13th pocket. I will be, in this, I will be uh, opening this. The has score which has been calculated for Vilas is this. And there is, um, you know, the value uh, for this is 40. And uh, it is now, I can say, I, I told you like the, uh, the, 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 the bucket can have many objects inside it. Those are will be linked as a linked list. Uh, we can have multiple uh, number of objects inside one bucket. And if that's the case, that's going to be a linked list, right? Right now, there is only one object here called Avilash. This is the only key which we have here, Avilash. And it does not contain, uh, it does not contain any other object. It, no other object has been refer referred inside, exist inside this uh, bucket. So I can say the next is null. If we have any other object uh, inside the same bucket, uh, then this next will contain the reference to the next object. We'll be talking about that. So now anyhow, we don't mind for that. If I do step over, that object has been inserted. And if I'll do, uh, let me go back to my app two class. Let me put another breakpoint here, 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 just to show you how the thing goes. Now, if I do resume, now Abilas object has already been inserted. You can uh, see our hash map is already having um, uh, a table. The table is having a node uh, in the in the bucket number 13 and that exists over here. That entry key value pair exists over here. 40 and Abilas, that's fine. That's the key value. And the next node uh, is not available and the hash code for the key is this, okay? Now, if I will be doing a step over, okay, again, I'm inserting the next key, which is Abhishek and the value is 30. Now the hash will be calculated. Okay, the hash will be calculated. And then if I'll do a step over, uh, it will be going into the string uh, hash code method because I'm calculating a string hash code for Abhishek. And if I do a uh, resume, then the put method will be called after the hash is calculated. Okay, 
Now if I'll do a step over and here the index will be calculated. Now index is nine. To the ninth bucket, this object will go. So if I'll do a step over, uh, you can see inside the table, inside the ninth bucket, uh, you know, uh, the object is here, which is Avishak. And if I do a resume once more, one more time, now I says I want to insert, let's do a step over, the hash will be calculated. Let me do a resume, the, uh, the spring has, string hash code method will be called. Let me do a step over, step over, step over, the hash will be calculated. And based on this hash right now, the index will be decided. Now, whenever the hash method, the hash method is getting called from the put method, and the put method has calculated the hash using this method. Now it will be getting me the hash of that inside the put val method, where put val method will be using that hash to determine where that particular object will go. Now, if I'll do a resume, I'll be going back to the put val method, do a step over, step over, step over. It'll go to the number eighth. And if you'll be seeing the table, inside the number eight, we have a new node, okay? And that's how all your objects will have the entry. Okay, now uh, let's go to the next one. And the next one will be a fun example. And now we are inserting the same object again, right? And if and if we're inserting the same object of the last, which is already there in the map, let's see how it goes. If I do a resume, the hash will be calculated, right? And the hash for the Avilas is going to be the exactly same. Now, if I'll do a resume, and if I'll do resume, the put val method, look at the hash which is coming here, is the exact same one, 1472273, whatever, 41. If you see our table, table right now, uh, let me just do step overs, and if you see the table here, so if I see, if I don't, if I'm not wrong, in the 13th bucket, we already have a Vilas, which has the same hash code. Look at this hash code number, and right now the object we are inserting, uh, this is having the same key, and the value is right now different, it's 30. Right now the value this guy is holding is 40, right? Now, I'll be finding the index number, and once I find the index number, it is saying that it will go to the 13th bucket, but now inside the 13th bucket, we already have this Avilas object which is having the value of 40. Now, uh, the, now we can see the equals will be called. The equals method will be called. And now if I'll be going into the string class and if I'll be looking for the equals method, okay, and if I put a breakpoint here, you can see the string class equals method will be called. I'll be also going into the object class because it also have a equals method in case the equals method has not been provided by the class which we're using as a key, uh, then the object class equals method will be called. But in this case, our object is a string object and the string already have overridden the equals method. So this guy, this equals method will be called. So I'll be going into the hash map again. Now here the equals method will be called. So the moment I'll be doing a step over, oh sorry, I just did a step over. Let's see, let me just do a resume directly and the program terminated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know, uh, my breakpoint didn't trigger, I didn't see like, you know, what I did over here. Okay, let's just try one more time. I'll just go to the app.java, I'll put, I'll just remove the breakpoint from here, here, and here. Let me have the breakpoint directly on line number 14. Let me start it in debug mode. And now the string equals method got called and you can see uh, this is just some Eclipse related thing. So for now, Till my program has not been uh, started, let me just disable all the breakpoint. So let me just disable everything. Let me have only one breakpoint activated in my app to this one. Uh, app to class, uh, in my main method, line number 14. That breakpoint only I'll be activating. App to class, line number 14. Only one breakpoint I'll be giving. And this breakpoint are right now disabled. So if, m when my program starts, is using some of my internal Java methods like equals and maybe some hash map method, maybe it may use. So I, I just disabled my breakpoint because I don't have anything to do with it. Let my program flow stop, uh, st uh, you know, stop here in the line number 14. Okay, now my program stops here in the line number 14. Now let me activate all my breakpoints. Okay, now let's just see what, what is happening here. Now I'll be inserting a Vilash here, and if you can see, 
in my hash map is already contains a table where we already have all the three elements and if i am not wrong last time this of the last 40 you can see it's already there in the number 13th bucket so now let's just see it one more time let me do a resume it will go to the put method the put val method will be basically calling the hash of the key now if i'll do a resume it will go to the hash of the key method um, where it will be taking the key and will be finding the hash and this hash code will be basically calling the string class hash code you can see this is a string and i'm calling the hash code so if i uh, if i do if i step into let me just uh, click on step into okay and you can see i came into the hash code method of string class and i didn't went to the object class hash code method and now if i'll be doing uh, step over step over and if i'll be going into the put method then it will be going into the put val method now if i'll be doing resume because here it will be finding the i where my object will go and now let's say my object my i has been calculated as 13 where already i have a uh, you know object available in the bucket number 13 as i said here i already have an object available so now it will be it will be finding the same index where it will be going now it, there will be a comparison check will happen because as we are getting a, another key which is carrying the value of a village, uh, then uh, right now the same key already exists over here and now it will be checked if both of the keys are same and if same then the value will be overridden if not same then um, you know um, you know the entry will be allowed and there will be a new object will be created and will be assigned to this node so now let me just do a uh, you know uh, let me just uh, the here is a equals check will happen but now basically if you if you see here uh, there is a equal checks over here and all this equals checks uh, is basically con to confirm that like whether the object is equal with the key and if the object will be equal with the key then the you know um, you know the value will be overridden so in this case is our object of the last is going to the bucket number 13 and uh, in the 13th index this value th this object will be inserted and obviously uh, right now uh, if I go inside the table inside the 13th I have a Vilas and 40 so this will be inserted uh, so this will be the value will be overridden because this is a duplicate key and the key dot equals method will basically confirms that because whenever we are having a duplicate key entry which is a village then the value is uh, so the value is 30 but the key is same as a village which is already exists inside this bucket number 13 and uh, this will be confirmed because this key will be compared with the key which exists over here and now it will be confirmed through the uh, through the equals method and this key is a string so the equals method will be called uh, on top of the string object right and the string class already have overridden the equals method so if i'll do go over here and if i'll go to the equals method then this equals method will be performed and this is basically going to help us to compare this couple of object based on the um, content type the content it is holding and this string is holding the content of a village now if i'll be going to the hash map class right now and I think I already have some more breakpoints here. Uh, so that's fine. Um, let me also put some breakpoint here so that I will not be going out of this. So I'll be just doing a resume. Okay, now uh, you can see now the old value is getting replaced uh, with the new value. So the value is so far 40, but now I think the value will be replaced. So you can see the value is replaced to 30 because the key has been matched and they are equals. And now I'll be just, um, you know, um, I'll be going back and here you can see the hash map final value. And the hash map right now, if I'll be printing this, it is this, Avilas is holding 30, um, 30 as something here, like 30 is the value here. So this is how the insertion process in the hash map goes. And I think we guys are okay with how the hash map basically works right over here so now let's just explore all the possible scenarios with the hash code and equals and what will happen so let's just go for it
all right so right now let's just jump straight into the contract part of the has code and equals all right so now i'll be going into q a1 i'll go into source main java and here i have my com selenium express package let me create a new class here and i'm going to be saying this class is app3 and uh, let's just do uh, something over here just to get a basic idea that what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to be checking your foundation and fundamental and uh, whatever the breakpoints that i have set previously let me just remove it i don't need to debug anything for now but whenever we will do we will be doing it and i'll be coming back to the java perspective uh, and that's it i think we are all good so we are in our app 3 right here so what i'm gonna do here so let's just go ahead and first of all okay can i can i can i make it full screen and just make it completely full screen okay imagine i have a integer let me create a integer object so i'm gonna be saying integer i'm gonna be saying key one and I'm going to be creating a new integer object here. I don't have to use a new QR. I can directly assign it like um, maybe uh, integer one or maybe 10, something like that. This is my key one. And uh, let's say I'm going to be having same over here. This is going to be key two and this is going to be key three. So let's say I have defined three integer variables and I'm going to be using these integers right now in my hash map. Okay. So I'm going to be using them as a key in the hash map. Okay. But the thing is all the key are having the same value of integer. So let's say I'll be creating a hash best collection, maybe a hash map. The key will be a integer and the value will be uh, whatever, let's say, it's a string and I'm going to be saying a hash map is equal to new hash map. All right. And now I'm going to be adding few entries to my map and a hash map that put, let me use the key one here and the value I'll be using as let's say the value is a Okay. And let's say a hash map and I'm going to be putting again and I'm going to be saying, let's say I'm going to be saying key two and it is going to be a B check or maybe I'm going to be using a different name Ramesh. Okay. And now I'm going to be doing sys out S out and I'm going to be doing what I'm going to be uh, getting, getting a couple of things. I'm going to be saying hash map dot get and I'll be getting the key one here, getting the value of key one. And right here, again, I'm going to be getting the value of key two. Okay. Now tell me what will be the output here. Okay. And also if I'll be doing key three here. Okay. Now you think and you tell me what will be the output of this. So guess the output. It's going to be pretty straightforward, right? The Q1 is 10. So it will be like 10 in a village. So one entry will be going into my map. And next time I'm entering key two, but the key two again having the same uh, value uh, over here, which is 10. So the key two uh, will be 10. So I think it will be having the same hash code as the Q1 and it will be going to the same bucket. Now, whenever we'll be entering the same key to the same bucket, because obviously the content of this and this are same. So the hash code will be same. The index will be pointing to the same bucket. So this key two also ended up going to the same bucket where the key one already exists. And then when the key two is supposed to be inserted to the same bucket, there will be a equality check. And obviously the key one value uh, is 10 and the value which is exist for Key two is also 10. Both of their value is 10, right? So now the key two will, there will not be separate entry for key two. Rather the key two will be replacing the value of Q1. So now the Q1 value will be updated to Ramesh, right? So the get of Q1 will be getting me the updated value over here, which will be Ramesh. And the get of key two will be getting me the updated 
uh, obviously the value of key two will be Ramesh. Okay. And the key three is, you see, like I don't have any entry for key three, but the key three is basically holding the value of 10, right? So whenever I will be getting the value of key three, there will be a check for the key 10. And obviously I do have a value for that Ramesh. Yeah. So this is also going to be Ramesh. So if I'll be running this, there we go. It's Ramesh, 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 three time Ramesh. So I hope you understand like how this works, right? Obviously the integer class that is already the hash code and equals value has been operated. If you don't understand this, apply all the formula that we have already understood. Think for one minute and I think you'll be able to get it. And if you don't believe me, just put a breakpoint here. Do right click, do debug edge, Java application. Let the flow stop here in the line number 15, do a switch. And once this variable section pops up, uh, it can see the uh, key one, key two, all the values are over here. Uh, all the three values are here. You can see 10, 10 and 10. And now uh, like once I, once I see this hash map, you can see I have a table and if I, ins if I expand this table, maybe in the 10th bucket, we have the entry. And next time, whenever I'm entering key two, uh, it will just replace that value to Ramesh and that's it. So we are having just one key and that's why every time you're printing, it's just giving Ramesh as a value. But um, yeah, I just want to ask you one question before you move forward. Uh, in this case, um, I'm actually creating how many integer objects? I'm, I'm doing key one equal to 10, key two equal to 10, key three equal to 10. So if I'm doing integer key four uh, is equal to 20. Okay, now as you already understood the example, I just wanna ask you one last question. It's nothing related to the hash map. Just tell me like key four is 20, okay? So how many times, um, how many objects are over here? If I, if I put a breakpoint here and if I start my application in debug mode, by the time I'll be reaching over here, all this object has been initialized, okay? So now you can see the Q1, Q2, and Q3 all are pointing to the same object. How I'm knowing it is pointing to the same object. Look at the ID which has been generated. And right now, internally, the way uh, this a, another interview question I feel, and people give this kind of example, like how many objects have been created over here? And obviously we see like this is one object, this is one object, but internally, all, this object is also pointing to this key. And this, this object is also pointing to this key because it has the same value. And you can see the ID and can confirm it, like ID is 21 for these three objects, right? So this object is having a different a different ID because the value is 20 and the key four is having a different object. So in this case, only two objects been created and you can confirm it by looking into the ID. It's 21 for all these three variables and that's making sure that we're pointing to the same object, all right? Okay, this is something, something out of context topic, but I think you understand how this example works, right? I'll be going back to the Java perspective and here we'll be going with a real time example right now. And I'll be going into my QA1 inside my source main. I'll be copying out this person class. I have already written it. I'll be changing it to a voter class. And inside this voter class, I'll be having let's say person name and I'll be having a voter constructor, a two string, the hash code and equals method. And I have removed the hash code and equals method over here. So I have a simple voter class over here. Nothing is present here. Just this two string method, a constructor and couple of variables, right? So now what I want to do, I'll be going back to my app three class and I'll be removing everything that I have over here. Now let me do a, let me do create uh, two, three keys. I'll be creating a voter and key one is equal to new voter and let's say the voter ID is 101 and the person name is 
uh, let's say a village all right and now i'll be having another voter key two but i'll be having the same voter um, you know id and the name okay so the id and the name are same and also maybe i'll be with the same content i'll be creating another key let's say this is key three all right now i have now i have a question the question is now i will be basically writing this i'll be creating a hash map hash map the key is let's say voter this is my custom object and the value for this is let's say um let's say edge okay uh edge i don't have something edge some user defined class so let me take integer and let's say hash map here is equal to new hash map all right so now i'll be saying hash map dot put i'll be adding the key one and the value i'll be adding over here is uh let's say edge is 20 okay now we see this it's going to be the exact same example as the previous one I'll be just doing control V, control V, and I'll be entering key two and key three, and I'm updating the value of key two as edge is 40 and this edge is 50. Now you tell me if I'll be doing sys out and if I'll be getting the value has map dot get of key one, and I'll be getting the key two value and key three value. And let me just, uh, comment out this key three let's say i'm removing this and let me just comment out this one and let me just say key two So now whatever I'm guessing this should be 40 and this value should be 40 okay and there is only one object exists inside our map but is that the case let's see that okay and uh, if I will be I'll be also printing my entire map here so I'll be just doing sys out and I'll be putting the hash map and you'll be seeing how many objects are there right click run as Java application and you'll be seeing right now I'm getting 20 and 40 and uh, that means two objects has been inserted and it, as you can see right now though this is the first person object and is carrying the value of 20 and this is the second person object which is the exact same object you can see the key the key is this which is the exact same object as this one and the value is 40 all right so there are two entries has been inserted and the reason is that we have not overridden the has code and equals. So the scenario that we have discussed just right now with diagram that will happen if the has code and uh, uh, equals has been overridden. If I will be going over here uh, to the border class and if I'll be overriding the has code and equals source generate uh, has code and equals and do generate. And if I'll be doing this and if I'll be running the same program, the expected output whatever i have written that will come run a java application and you can see it is just giving me 40 and 40 and there is only one insertion to the map but right now if i don't have the hash code and equals uh, you know this is something which is happening uh, it's just giving me some crazy result 
and now for now if I'll be commenting out this uh, let's understand this why why I'm getting if I'm commenting this out why this thing is happening Java application if I run this why two insertions are happening why two insertions are happening and why both of the objects are getting entered so let's understand this so uh, right now uh, let me let me just try to draw again and uh, let me let me just try to see like you know what what actually happened here imagine we have a big map right now like this and we have let's say some buckets like this there are 16 buckets let's say 0 dot 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 uh, 16 okay there are some buckets here 0 and let's say this is first bucket this is second bucket it goes up to 16th bucket now imagine I'll be inserting an object let's say this object I want to insert let's say this is an object and let's say this is water object ID is 1 and this is a village all right now uh, the value of this is 20 now first of all you know the hash of this key will be calculated and whenever hash of this key will be calculated this this um, you know object that we are having right now which is this object this this object has code how it will be calculated do we have a hash code method over it in inside our um, you know inside our uh, voter class no we don't have any hash code method has been overridden if the hash code method has not been overridden the object class hash code method will be called and what the object class hash code method will do it will create a hash code but based on the memory address not based on the content so obviously this is a unique object which has been created inside the java heap and this object will be having a unique hash code let's say the hash code will come as 112311 okay uh, let's say this hash code will be further processed to an index and the index will be found as 1 now this object will be going to the this bucket okay let's say i'm just saying voter object 1 and abhilas a stands for Avilash. let's say 20 is the value now you think now the next key you are entering right over here now let's say this is a another object okay the key is 101 in Avilash. so I'm gonna be saying 101 in Avilash. I'm just just writing 101 this should also should be 101 okay and now the value for this is 40 now this is the exact same key look at this this is the key 2 right so this is the key 2 we are inserting this is the exact same key as this one this couple of thing are same based on the content but now whenever we'll be calculating the hash code out of the key think about this key if you are calculating the hash code for this now again this key 2 is a different object and the hash code method of the object class will be called because we have actually not overridden the hash code method um, inside our voter class so obviously right now the hash code method of the object class will be giving us a different hash code now let's say the hash code will be 222311 so this is not same as this one so this object right now will not be going into the first bucket because if you're going to be finding the index out of it let's say it is going to the second bucket so obviously whenever we're entering this to the second bucket there is nothing over here now this object uh, voter 101 of villas is going into this and this is 40 right so this object went to the second bucket right now so obviously there has been two insertion over here and whenever you are getting the key one you are getting the value for q1 and q1 is this object for this object right now it has been inserted to the first bucket so this has been given to you and whenever you are asking for this key too you are asking for basically this object and obviously the get function will get you this object value this object value is 40 and this object value is 20 so it is printing 20 and 40 and that's how if you're not overriding the hash code method now you are having this problem
if I'll be running this application, you're gonna be seeing there are a couple of entries here and 20 and 40 we're getting and we are having two insertion. And you're gonna be saying like, like if I'll be putting a breakpoint here, by the time I, I'll be debugging this application, uh, till line number eight, there will be two insertion in my hash map. There will not be any one insertion. If I go to the hash map, if I see the table here, you can see two objects right now. You can see there are two objects. Q1 is a different object. Look at the ID. ID is 23. This is uh, Eclipse is basically giving us a unique ID for a unique object. Now this voter object is the same. Like you can see it's having the same content person voter ID 101. This is also having the same content here. Okay, but the problem is these three are three different objects, right? And now you see uh, for the key one right now, if I op if I expand this, um, you can see uh, the key is containing the voter uh, with ID 25. You can see the ID 25 is the key two. So this is basically the key two object went into this bucket, number fifth bucket. And this is the value of that voter. And this is how you are getting this. You can see the ID and uh, this is basically the key two object. And uh, the, key, the key one object where it went, the key one is having the ID of 23, right? This 23 uniquely identifying the key one object. So let's see where the key one went, maybe to the number seventh bucket. If we go into that, see ID 23, ID 23, ID 23 belongs to Q1. So uh, you can see uh, this voter went to the number seventh bucket and that's it. So whenever you are asking for the Q1 object, it is just giving you 20 because the Q1 object, look at the key, the ID, which is 23, where this ID with 23 voter object went, this went into the number uh, number seventh pocket. So the value of this is 20 and that's what you are getting in the console. And whenever you are doing get of key two, and you can see uh, here is another voter object and this is having the ID of 25. Look at the ID of 25 here, this is key two. And this ID of 25 value is how much? It is 40, okay? So the number five key two went over here and the value it is holding is, uh, you know, 40. And that's how if I'll be asking for the key two object value, it is just getting me 40, all right? And this mess happened because we have not overridden the hash code method. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and override the hash code method and let's see what is going to happen. So if I'll go over here right now, and if I'll go to the voter class, this hash score method right now, let me override. So the hash score will be generated out of my content, which will be like uh, the voter ID and the person name. Out of this content, the hash code will be generated. So let's see that. So if I'll be going into the app three right now, let's see what is going to happen. So imagine right now the hash code has been overridden. Again, we'll be having a hash map. We'll be having 16 number of buckets. Imagine zero, one, two, and it goes still 16. Let's say the Q1 we want to insert. Okay, this is voter of 101 and a village, and the value is 20. This is one object. Another object is also having the same key, voter of 101 and a village, and the value is 40. This is the couple of objects we are inserting over here. Only thing is like the key are same, but this time the hash code has been overwritten. So if we have a hash function here, if we are inserting the key, that means we'll be finding the hash of the key. The hash of the key will be, um, let's say it's given as one, one, two, one, one, one. And this time the hash code method, the hash function will be calling the internal hash code method and the hash code method we have overridden inside our voter class and the voter class hash code method will make sure that for every objects which are equal, it is going to generate the same hash code. So for this, it has been uh, generating the hash code out of the content, like the ID and the name, and it has given us this hash code, 112111. And let's say it is going to the first bucket. So this object went into the first bucket and the value here is 20, okay? Now, the second object will be inserted and obviously this object key also will be pushed into the hash function. It will call the voter class hash code method and obviously, 
uh, this is also will generate the content, uh, generate the house code out of the content and the content are 101 and Avilash, which is same as the key one, which has been already inserted. So the house code will be same again, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, one. Let's say it is finding the index, which is one. Now this um, is going to be inserted to the same index number because the hash code are same for this couple of uh, objects because we have overridden the hash code method inside uh, the voter class and it will get us the same hash code. And uh, right now uh, this is also giving us the same index number. Now this is good. Now this object will be inserted to here. Now whenever this object will be inserted to here, it will not be directly inserted. There is already an object uh, present over here. Now if there is already an object present over here, now we have to check for the contents, whether the key are equal. Now this key that we are having here, imagine this, this couple of, this is key one, this is key two. Now this key two we are inserting, this is that one. This is my shorthand, I'm really sorry, it means water, 101 and Ovilas. This key that we're inserting right now, there will be a equals check. How the equals check will be done through the equals method. Do we have a equals method overridden inside the voter class? No. If we don't have a equals method over it in here, then which equals method will be called? The object class equals method. What the object class equals method does, does it, do, does it uh, check the equality based on the content or based on the reference? Object class equals method checks the equality based on the reference. And obviously right now, whenever we will be inserting this, uh, this object content and this object content will not be, not be uh, considered. Right now, uh, the content will not be compared. Their reference will be compared because the object class equals method will be called. Now it will be checking whether this object reference is same as this object reference. No, this is a separate object in the heap. This is a separate object in the heap. Obviously these two object, if you're comparing, if you'll be doing key one equals equals key two, uh, this will be false because this is a separate object. This is a separate object. This will be false. That means this key are not matching, these are different. And then again, another object will be inserted in the same bucket. Now it will be again voter of 101 of Vilash and the value will be 40. Okay, so now what will happen? Uh, the hash code method you have overridden. So you ended up entering uh, the objects into the same bucket, but now the ob here the value should have been overridden because we should have compared the key based on the content. Equality should have been checked between this key and this key based on the content, but that did not happen, right? That's why the equality check failed and the object has been inserted, all right? And now what will happen? A simple thing, so whenever you will be doing get of key one, uh, so key one, um, like key, the get function will be finding the hash code, then finding the bucket number. It will be going into this, uh, this bucket because get method also will do the same thing, right? Get method will be finding the hash code first. It will it will be using the hash function to determine the hash code. Let's say the hash code will be one one two one one one, and then it will be further process and it will be finding the index number. It will be looking inside the first bucket. Okay, for the first bucket here, uh, it will be looking for the key one. Okay, the key one is this one, and the key one is went to this. And the value for this is 20 and whenever it will look for the key 2 uh, the hash will be same and the bucket number will be same this is the key 2 object right and the value will be 40 will we still be getting 20 and 40 over here 20 and 40 in this case and there should be two objects should be inserted to the map but they should be ended up inside the same bucket and there you go 20 and 40 are the answer and two object inserted in the map Let's see whether this couple of objects went to the same bucket. Uh, let's say debug as Java application. And if I'll do a switch, and if I open the hash map, if I see the table, uh, look at that. I think the, see, everything is null. Only the second bucket is having a couple of objects. Though, see the key one is having ID of 28. Key two is having the ID of 31. Key three we are not using right now. So if you see in the number two, we have a hash code generated 160 something ending with 102. Uh, ID 21, this voter object ID 21, sorry ID 28. 28 is key one. Key one ended off inside the number second bucket. 
okay and the value is like 20 and if you open up the next node this is a link list and the next node of the list is containing the voter with id 31 id 31 belongs to key 2 so next up next node is containing the next voter and it is having the same hash code look at the hash code are same but this this uh, voter which is which is if you see this voter see the content and this key see the content they are they are same but still even though the key are same this key and this key are same still this key is ended off having an entry to, to the map which should not happen and also the value it go, got is 40 this 40 should have been override uh, this value that we have is 20 for the first key but that did not happen the next node is right now containing a key a hash the hash is same as the first key and you know uh, the value as well right so that's how you know the hash code method of we're overriding it but that actually not solving the problem but it is just pointing to one bucket pushing the elements over there but because we don't have the equals method of not overridden it is uh, it is ended up having a couple of entries here i hope this is making sense right Now let me just resume it. Now let's just go to the portal class and let's just comment out the hash code method. But uncomment the equals method. Now think what will happen. The same example we will run in the app 3. Okay. In the app 3 we will be running the same example. Only the hash code method has been over. Uh, only the equals method has been overridden. But the hash code method has not been overridden. Now let, let's just guess the output here. This case is going to be really simple, isn't it? Uh, this case is going to be so simple. Why is that? Because you think right now the hash code is not overridden. So the hash map will be there. There will be buckets like this. And this will be 0 to 16. Let's say uh, you are entering the first object. Uh, Porter 101 of Vilash. And the value is 20 goes through the hash function it will be finding the hash code do we have the hash code overridden no it is not overridden so the object class hash code method called a hash code has been generated let's say the index has been calculated as one this object is going into here uh, and uh, this is like you know voter 101 of the last and some value 20 okay now the next object we are inserting whenever we are inserting the next object Let's say the next object is um, another object here. This is like again voter 101 and Abhilas and this is having 40. Now it will go through the hash function. Uh, whenever it will go through the hash function, it will it will be calling the object class hash method because we don't have the hash code method overridden inside the voter class. And if the object class hash code method will be called, then what will happen? Then obviously, you know, the hash code will be generated based on the memory. Uh, memory reference and obviously this is a different object so it will be having a different hash code and the uh, if the hash code will come as three 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 one two two let's say it will be giving me a different index number as uh, let's say zero and now this object will be going to a different bucket right it is not ended up in the same bucket so let's say the voter object went over here 101 of the last and this is going to be 40 and now obviously there are a couple of entries into a couple of different buckets and this actually doesn't make sense right and there is no use of equals method right now because the object itself went into a different bucket so it would have if it had come to this bucket then the equals method would have uh, you know does the trick by comparing the key but now the equals is not there so the object ended up inside a different uh, bucket so two entries will be there inside two different bucket so now if i will be removing this and um, you know if i'll be going out of this so uh, like we'll be getting again 20 and 40 and we'll be getting duplicate insertion and you can see we're getting 20 and 40 and all the couple of objects went into to the hash map so if you're going to be uh, putting a breakpoint here starting it in debug and if you'll be seeing like here if you'll be doing a switch uh, by the time the object has already been inserted and if you're going to be looking over here uh, the table has couple of entries sizes two 
and you can see two different object number five and number seventh bucket is containing the voter object having a, a ID 24 and another one is having a voter object having ID 25. 25 goes to the key two, 24 goes to the key one. So they ended up getting inserted into a couple of different indexes. I hope this is making sense. So, so the bottom line is, the bottom line is you have to override both. You have to override both the hash code and equals method. So like this, you have to, let me just select everything, uncomment them, and that's how it should be. Uh, so uh, right now, both the hash code and equals method has been uh, overridden. And in this case, in this case, no, so what will happen, you all know, right? It's going to be very simple. And if this is the case, then, um, you know, you'll be finding like it is working as desired. There is only one uh, object which has been inserted and the first object um, uh, value has been replaced by the second one and it's been overridden. And now both are 40. Both the values are 40 and only one object is over there. And that's how it should work. So uh, this, I think I don't have to explain uh, this thing. I, I have already explained this thing, I feel. So I don't have to explain this one more time. So that is the bottom line. So I hope you understand how the hash code and equals method works. Um, I think, I think this will be really simple if you start thinking about it. Keep debugging. See like which hash code method is getting called, whether the object class hash code method is getting called or whether the voter class hash code method is getting called. Right? So in any hash based coll collection, uh, the duplicate insertion are possible unless and until you are not overriding the hash code and equals. So uh, the same thing goes for the hash, uh, hash set as well. If you talk about the hash set, the hash set add method internally use the put method of the hash map. So the structure is really same as this one. So you got to understand the contract between the hash code and equals, they have to stay together all the time. And I hope this is making sense. And if it is, then things are good. You go ahead and practice and I'll see you guys in the next session. That's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to subscribe. It's 12, 7 a.m. and I have to sleep. I have a call tomorrow at 5.30 in the morning. I got to go and I hope you are good. See you in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.